Georgia, I must confess, I was a little stymied when I, when I got our tea this morning. I went across to the, to the cafe to, to get it. I asked for two teas. The lady behind the counter looked at me and said, what tea would you like? I made the comment, tea please. And uh, she then told me there were 35 different types of tea. So I hope you like what you've got. Very good. I wanted to catch up with you. The US industry is going through a fundamental change. It's moving from T plus three to T plus two, which I believe needs to be in place by Q3 2017. That's a big industry shakeup. Clearly there's a lot of technology that has to change. There are a whole set of industry practices and processes that need to be, need to be uh, uh, altered to meet the standard. George, why the move now to T plus two? Well, I, w I wanted to start off and say, it's about time. <laughs> um, if I recall, late 2014, most of Europe went to T2. That's correct. Um, and then earlier this year, our friends down under Australia and New Zealand went to T plus two. So I, I think because we see this harmonization across the markets occurring, the U.S. markets and I believe Canada as well is, is moving towards the T plus two uh, settlement cycle. I think is the harmonization is, is really driving the push from T3 to T2. What other benefits are U.S. firms looking, looking to? Well, one of the benefits with harmonization is really being able to manage cash efficiently operationally efficient and, and what I mean by that is being that most of the developed markets that are now T plus two are settling on T plus two the US and the the other markets that are settling later has to free up the capital or have we have to wait for that for those trades to settle before we can purchase on the markets that are settling earlier. So it's faster, faster capital turns. Yeah, it's faster capital turns and, and funds that are really, or accounts that are managing cash, really tight cash. It is hard to manage tight cash with markets that are settling in different time periods. So if, if we're harmonizing the markets, I think it's more efficient to manage this cash tightly in, in these different markets. And presumably there is lower risk as well? Yes, and that's another, another uh, reason why I think we're, we're moving there and, and, and it's probably the reason why we moved back in 95 is, you know, the counterparty risk is reduced and market, associated market risks are also reduced. So, for example, principal versus agency trades, counterparty risk is reduced from principal trades. Agency trades, we are reducing market risk if, if a counterparty was to go under. They don't have, we don't have to go back out to the market to purchase a stock or you know, security that, that the, the counterparty was supposed to deliver to us. So that reduces the market risk as well. We're in New York, we're in the middle of Central Park. Mm -hmm. Some might say that the US is the center of the financial universe. Some might say, being based in London, we might have a slightly different perspective, but some might say, don't you have an opportunity here as the US to really show leadership and not just go t from T2, why not move straight to T plus one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing catch up here. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. That's, uh, that is a, a big undertaking. You know, I do some, I know some people do view that the US is the center and um, <laughs> But you know, I think it goes back to what I was saying before, is, is really the harmonization of the markets. If, if, if there was a global effort to move to T plus one, it might make sense for us to do that as well. Um, again, you know, I, I think this is long overdue. Uh, we should be really talking about T plus one, but being that all the other markets, all the developed markets are at T plus two, the US is, is really you know, catching up. And that's the reason why I think we should move to T plus two first and then later on assess T plus one or T plus zero makes sense. There's, you know, th th this day, technology, automated 
pretty much everything. Banking, trading, and um, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that some of the operational work is still very manual. We're, we're still matching trades on T plus one, and moving to that short time frame is really going to expedite the, the, the matching process for us from going to T plus two. So T plus one is, I think, a little further away at this point. Perhaps we first, too, too ambitious? Yeah, too ambitious. And uh, we just really have to focus on first what we're doing today, improving our matching process and moving towards the T plus two and then later on reassess where we are. I think you're right. I mean, I think it's fair to say that a lot of automation sits in the front office mm -hmm. in terms of execution, mm -hmm. but in terms of settlement and matching and clearing in the middle and back office, sure. there's just an awful lot of manual intervention and that's going to take some time uh, to be in a T plus one or better uh, yes. position. So we're what, 15 months away from T plus two? Yeah. What's your sense of how ready US firms are to make the leap? I think we're ready. And uh, the reason why I say that is, again, most of the developed markets are already at the T plus two market, at the T plus two time frame. Uh, we, we in the US also short settle trades from T plus three. At times we do T plus one trades, T plus two trades. So I know that we're systematically and operationally ready. Uh, it's just a matter of handling the amount of transactions that now will require a T plus two shorter settlement cycle. So, you know, what I think firms need to do again is, is really look at the matching, the affirmation and the confirmation process and see what their, their matching rate is on T. Um, you know, the reason is that you, you want to be north of 95% or even more matched on trade date. That would allow straight through processing to occur and, and you will meet that T plus two market. T plus two settlement. So, you know, that, that's, that's the reason why I think the U.S. firms are ready is that, you know, we, we have the systems, we, we know that we can do it. Most developed markets are already there. We just really have to assess internally how our workflow is, what we're doing today as far as our matching rate, and um, make sure that we're ready when uh, Q3 occurs 2017. So you've touched on some of the points already, uh, George, but Perhaps just to, to, to boil it down, with just over a year to go, let's, let me sprinkle some magic dust in the air and you wake up tomorrow and you're the chief operating officer of a, of a large asset, <laughs> asset manager. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, don't tell your boss. <laughs> uh, but, but you wake up, what are the three to five things that a COO should be focusing on now as, as you move towards T2? Sure. Well, I, I think the first thing you have to assess is the impact to your business. Um, I kind of touched on this earlier as far as managing cash. Um, I, I think it's important for the front office to know that now that we're moving to a T plus two market, capital will be released or will be available on a shorter time period. Uh, so we could eventually invest what's being raised into markets that are T plus two. Uh, so we don't really have to match the settlement cycles. So that might have an impact on the names that the portfolio managers might want to invest in, the markets that they would want to invest in. Um, another thing I would assess is, is the risk. Is uh, operationally, what risk are we undertaking? Uh, there's FX risk. Uh, there are, I know, back-end processes with trade process that that, for example, like FX trading, where we would do the FX trading once the trade is matched for settlement purposes. So if a U.S. fund, for example, is, has an operating currency of U.S. dollar and we purchase a U.K. stock, we need to convert that to British pounds. Mm -hmm. We wait until that trade is matched. So now with the shorter settlement cycle, we have to make sure that the, the, the trade is settled and matched and that the FX is settling at the same time so the trades are clear. So there's FX risk, there's operational risk, trade risk, um, 
there, there's also corporate actions that might play a role into here. Um, and for the clients, clients that are in, for example, security lending programs, you know, they should be made aware of getting the securities back on a shorter time frame. You know, that we don't want to incur any trading fail costs for the clients. So there's, um, again, operational risk in that. And finally, I, I think I focus on the implementation of this. And I, I believe that our order management systems will play a big role in this change uh, since they are really driving what the settlement cycles are for each of the trades that, that we execute. Uh, so we want to make sure that all the systems are ready, that we're communicating this downstream to our middle office, to our back office. Uh, so we, we really have to manage the implementation of this. So George, I feel a bit like Steve Jobs here. W one more thing, F final question. Mm. A bit of a curveball, I know. We spoke before about the merits of going to T2 as opposed to T1. But with all the technology changes that we're seeing right now and, and clearly the, the disruptive effects that are coming down the turnpike, is there not an opportunity here to move from T plus two and go straight to T0 using blockchain? Well, I think technology-wise, we're there. We could be there. I don't think technology is really the roadblock to move to, to a shorter settlement cycle than what we're aiming for. I really think it's, it's the downstream systems and the processes that are are driving a T plus two settlement cycle and not a shorter one. Uh, I don't think that systems, I don't think, I'm sorry, the processes that we have in place with the custodians, with the clients, uh, with the brokers themselves even, are, are really vetted out to, to get to that really short T plus T zero settlement cycle. Um, and again, the harmonization is, is a huge, huge in, endeavor, you know, so that, that really helps us, again, managing cash as for the funds that we have and moving to a shorter, shorter settlement cycle than all the other global markets will, I think, bring us back to where we are today. Right. This fundamental mismatch yeah. across the world. Exactly. George, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.